What's up everyone, my name is Max Schmarzo. I train professional athletes and I kind of work as a sports scientist, but for your benefit, I make science less confusing and a little bit more applicable. So today we're talking about maximal strength training. And now this is important to understand the distinguish, well, the distinction between training to be maximal strong and maximal strength training. Maximal strength training is a method or a style of training. It's not a goal. Training to get maximally strong is a goal, and it encompasses many different types of training in it. Really quick, if you wanted to get really strong at a squat, you wouldn't just lift the heaviest weights possible in the squat. You do other things and other types of lifts, maybe working on your knee extension, and maybe some hypertrophy work, so on and so forth. Maximal strength training, that is using a heavy, heavy weight that is near maximal, is something different. And that's what we're talking about here today. Lifting heavy. So what the heck is heavy? Basically, some of the books will define it between 80 to 100%. I kind of like to think about it on an RPE scale, which is a relative perceived exertion, which is like, hey man, how hard is that scale? Like, is that really heavy for you? Is it difficult? Is it not? Um, and if it's like in the, I don't know, 8.5 and above realm, then it's probably maximal strength. But why does it have any benefits? Um, so first and foremost, when you're lifting something really heavy, like my friend here, or he's lifting something really heavy, you have exertion. And exertion in the sense that you have to focus with your own mental volition to try and lift this thing really heavy. And when you do this, there's only one option and that is to lift the darn thing. And that's really important to understand because you have to try your hardest, one option, to um, lift the heavy, heavy weight. And one option is try really, really hard. Now, if this weight was lighter and it wasn't this heavy, right, there's multiple options. You could lift it kind of slow. You could lift it, in, you know, uh, moderately fast. There is a high level of speed or effort variability that comes with lighter weights, right? So if you go and sprint as fast as you possibly can, you can only sprint as fast as you possibly can by trying as hard as you possibly can. But if you were to lift, I don't know, let's pretend you could squat 500 pounds, good for you, you're super strong, and you put 100 pounds on the bar, well, you could move that really slow, you could move it really fast. The point is there's a large amount of uh, effort variability, variability and effort. All right, what happens is when we lift a really heavy weight, we don't have the luxury to have variability in effort. We just have to lift it as hard as we possibly can. So what does that do? Good question. So now we've distinguished between uh, just you know lifting a weight and lifting something that is near maximal strength. There are some things that come with it. So the key thing here, and this is why some people debate whether or not some of the achievements of maximal strength training can be achieved with lighter weights. I'm not here to bring up that and siphon out or sift through that debate, but simply the question is, is this really just based on effort or is the actual load and magnitude of the weight evoke something else? But we'll get to that at the end, so I'll write a little note here. Effort versus mass, right? The sheer weight on the bar. So when I lift a really heavy weight, here's some of the benefits. My central nervous system, that is your brain, we're gonna make my lifter guy again, has to tell your muscles, hey, try really hard. So it's gonna have a high level of motor unit, that's what MU stands for, recruitment. Recruit. It's gonna have a high level of motor unit discharge rate or coding rate, motor unit coding rate, and that's the speed at which these muscles are activated. By the way, a motor unit, for those at home who don't know, you have your muscle fibers and they're innervated by a neuron, and that grouping of the neuron and the muscle fibers, that is the motor neuron and the muscle fibers, that's a motor unit. And you have many different motor units inside of one muscle of your leg, like your arm, might have many different motor units inside the biceps area. And so when we lift really heavy, we try and recruit all those because we're trying really hard to lift that big heavy weight. So that's really important. 
activates all the fibers. It also activates the speed of it. And then, and when we're trying hard, there is this mythical, magical area, an area that we have really trouble describing in science, and that is the central nervous system. Does it learn to try hard, right? Does it learn to try hard? And in doing so, when you don't lift such a heavy weight and you go to do other try hard things, like I'm gonna jump as high as, as I can, and maybe there's some carryover from these discharge rates because you now know how to activate those fibers. And that's the big debate about is it effort or weight, right? Is it an effort thing where if I try really hard, can I, you know, am I getting benefits obviously from lifting the weight? Sure, you have myofibril breakdown, right? You have the muscles themselves are being exercised, they're being torn down, they're being activated. There is metabolic um, demand on the, on the area. There are, you know, uh, neurotransmitters being used. So the system is being activated when it's stressed, it adapts. But the question is, is that why it transfers over to explosive movements? Is it the try hard thing? And it's maybe, yes, but maybe the mass itself, like when you put a weight and you have a feedback of the weight onto your body, it also potentially evokes some sort of a general reflex. I use that term very loosely because it's not a specific pathway. Like typically we think about a reflex, you smack someone's knee and it extends and you say, ah, reflex, right? You have some sort of a loop that occurs um, below the central pathways, maybe a supraspinal reflex. But let's pretend we, put, we have our person here and we're gonna do our seated knee extension and here's my knee extension machine. Did I draw a good knee extension machine? I kind of did, good for me, that's the weight. Uh, not great, it kind of progressively got worse. Whatever, he's on the extension machine, there's a weight here, and this person pushes into it, right? And we know how uh, science and physics works, and if you don't have it, it you know, the weight pushes back into you. And if we don't have a greater push that away, um, then the total aggregate mass or the total overcoming resistance needed to move it, it'll remain static, it won't move. But once we can produce enough force acting upon it, we'll eventually move it this way, and that equal amount of force is acting back in us. So why is that important? Good question. It is possible that when we have a really heavy load on our back or we're doing something really heavy like a knee extension, our body has some sort of sensation of, oh my goodness, Ugh, that's really heavy. And in doing so, you have subconscious pathways start to prepare the system. Um, you also have some level of arousal and excitement. That is, I feel it really heavy. Your central nervous system might start releasing hormones that are responsible for mobilization of energy, you might see things like growth hormone and testosterone, and we're not considering all this as anabolics in the sense that the presence is physiologically, um, statistically significant or physiologically significant to create muscle adaptations, but it's possible that this stuff being released is allowing your body to evoke a larger central response. So I didn't wanna dive into it, but I did really quickly. It's possible the actual weight on the bar touching your body and when you lift it and you feel it, there is some tactile pressure and resistance and feedback pathway that tells you, hey, you gotta lift that darn thing really heavy. So yes, the mass might be important because mass drives the effort in a way that just effort itself couldn't do. Um, it's almost like a level of competition, like someone's running in front of you. Well, you feel the weight is not moving when you need to push a little harder to make it move. But the point is maximal strength training does have some of those unique properties. Motor unit recruitment, you have um, motor unit discharge rate, you have uh, systemic central nervous system load. That is when you're lifting something really heavy, your whole body is gonna try really hard. And that systemic aspect could be in conjunction with some of the hormones themselves. Um, this type of stuff typically is not massively metabolically demanding, right? You don't do enough reps to tear down things to create tons of aggregate uh, metabolic waste that has to be cleared in the same way that high number of reps and time under tension might. But there might be some level of fatigue because when you try really hard, there's a level of concentration and you know sympathetic nervous system activation that you have to recover from the same way if you go and you go and talk in front of people in front of a big crowd and you're you know, on a microphone and you're talking to people. And let me draw this a little better here so you guys see I'm, you know, in front of a crowd and I'm talking to people. All my people in the crowd, yay, they're listening to me talk. And I'm giving my master's defense, right? I'm talking blah, blah, blah. And after an hour of it or so, I get tired. And that night I'm really sluggish and lethargic and sleepy because this whole time my sympathetic nervous system, which maybe I'll make another video on later, was activated this whole time. Even though I didn't exert any physical effort, 
I'm still really pooped out the same way my central nervous system might be pooped out because of the high level sympathetic nervous system activation when I lift something really heavy. Maximal strength training, a good thing. Some of the ranges you can take away from 80 to 100% is what the books typically say. I'm like, hey man, if it's pretty heavy and it's making you work pretty hard, it's probably near that maximal strength training. I like to think of it in things that you can lift one to two, maybe, maybe three times, more like one to two. Um, you can't do a tons of reps at it and it requires a lot of focus and effort. It has a lot of benefit because of the high effort and demand, but also its benefits are as negative and that high effort and demand does require some recovery. So maximal strength training made simple for all you friends out there who like sports science and like learning. If you made it this far, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share this page. I appreciate you guys always. Leave questions if you have them. And thank you.